Neurotypicals choosing a cereal spoon. An autistic person choosing a cereal spoon. What is that substance? TV and movie writers are on strike and I support them. The Writers Guild of America West, which writes most movies and TV, has gone on strike for higher pay and I think it's great. That's because I support all unions except police unions and I support all strikes, including police strikes. I've seen some right-wingers be like, oh no, the woke writers won't be writing their woke shows. How do you know they're woke if you aren't watching them? Oh, you aren't watching House of the Dragon? Okay, buddy. I've seen other people be like, how dare they? These are laborers. These are the people creating the thing more than anyone else. Imagine if every CEO went on strike, the world would just continue to move on and no one would care. The last time there was a writer's strike 15 years ago, we got Transformers 2 and Quantum of Solace. The last time we got The Celebrity Apprentice, which made Donald Trump insanely popular and probably led to him being president. So solidarity, give the writers what they want. What, what's a frog? What is a frog? It's showtime. As a trans guy, I get a lot of comments from people calling my voice or my face feminine and saying that there's no way I pass in public. These sorts of comments would have bothered me as a kid, but seeing as I started my transition nearly five years ago, people who say stuff like this just kind of sound silly. I live in Texas where a lot of people just don't really know about trans people, and it was so easy to convince everyone in my life I was cis. In fact, there was this one guy who knew me pre-transition, and when I was 15, he followed me on Instagram. I was really scared at first, but I decided to just start messing with him. I photoshopped shirtless pictures of me and put them online. I posted pictures of me as a kid before I had long hair. I posted a video where my mom said, happy birthday, son, and everyone bought it. Even this guy who had known me for years just straight up forgot I was trans. When I eventually stopped being stealth, this guy messaged me and said, oh my god, I swear I knew you had a different name in middle school, but I thought I was just imagining things. The shirtless photos really got me. So, moral of the story, if you think I'm too feminine to pass, you're thinking too hard. I promise, I'm doing just fine. I am going to kill your family And the cops will believe you when you say it was me One of the things I always make my hearing friends do is stand to the left of me. Because I'm deaf in my right ear and hard of hearing in my left ear, I hate whenever my friends stand to the right side of me and I have to look over to the right and break my neck while trying to hear. And because my hearing friends always forget, I have to train them to stop doing that. What I do when my hearing friends stand to the right of me, I will literally stop talking, fold my arms, and stare at them forever until they realize their mistake because they can't keep doing that. And I get that people will forget, but what do you want me to do? I can't have a sign that says death. <laughs> Y'all do know that this is the dystopian timeline, right? Like, you can keep on reading your dystopian novels or whatever, but you are living it. I mean, we've got three billionaires in the United States that own more wealth than the bottom 50% of Americans. If those aren't the big bad guys, then who is? We're walking off a climate change cliff. Like, I don't know what more evidence you need. We've got robot dogs, but this is the bad timeline. How did gay men get limp wrists. It's a ridiculous stereotype, but there is historical explanation. Let's go back to ancient Rome. Teachers of rhetoric or persuasive speaking discouraged limpness in public speaking because it was thought to be a lack of masculine control over the body. This wasn't about homosexuality because the Romans also thought that men sleeping with men was very masculine. But in the 18th century Europe, homosexuality was seen as the opposite of masculinity. During this period, physiognomy, or otherwise known as a pseudoscientific practice of assessing one's character based on their physical 
physical appearance was in full swing. Physiognomists borrowed from ancient Rome and determined that strong charactered real men had unyielding wrists. Therefore, gay men, which were the opposite of real men, had limp wrists. When the European first came here, Columbus, we could drink out of any river. If the Europeans had lived the Indian way when they came, we'd still be drinking out of water because the water is sacred. The air is sacred. Our DNA is made of the same DNA as the tree. The tree breathes what we exhale. When the tree exhales, we need what the tree exhales. This is the darkest shade of the brand new Tarte Shape Tape Radiant Concealer, but is it inclusive? This is shade 63H Espresso Honey, and let me just say this, I love a radiant light concealer. First impression is giving dark baddies, okay? I love bright under eye, but on some days, I like my concealer to be very close to my skin color, and wow! This shade is insane because it's not even blended, but it honestly looks like my skin. I always blend going up my face, but this feels great, y'all. Great. Look at how that's blending up my hyperpigmentation around my mouth. That's evening my tone so well. It literally almost looks like my foundation shade. I don't know if you guys can see the glow. Like, oh. Let's start blending my under eyes out. First of all, you can't even, what? Like, can you tell I have concealer on? That's insane. A radiant inclusive concealer. Maureen was in that lab cooking because look at this. I am not right wing at all. So stop saying that. I lean way left. In Anyone that likes this book is genuinely a bad person. Everyone liking this book is what's wrong with society. This book just makes me uncomfortable and not in a good way. And this is some people's favorite book and I don't trust their taste. Somehow the movie version of this sucked, but it was still better than the book. This one's not good, but, but maybe that's on me. This book's not good, and that's not on me. It's just not good. BLM, where are you at? Black leaders always talking about systemic racism, where are you at? I have a couple answers and I have a couple questions. So let's run it back from the top. BLM, where are you at? Black Lives Matter is a movement and organization dealing in police brutality and instances of racial injustice, not inner city gun violence. If you must know, there are plenty of organizations on the ground in Chicago that deal with gun violence every single day. Black leaders always talking about systemic racism, where are you at? Having the conversation that is way more complex and nuanced than just, it's the culture, bro. But we got some questions from that perspective later. Why doesn't anyone call this out and say, you know, this is bullshit. What are y'all doing? What are we doing? Because the vast majority of people, and yes, even black people, already know that someone killing another person is bad. And asking black people to speak on behalf of their entire race every time a black person kills another black person is A, not a standard that any other demographic in this country is held to, B, does nothing to change the material conditions on the ground that actually lead to things like those shootings, and C, works to paint an entire group as a monolith and incredibly violent for the actions of a few members of that group. Y'all say you want this to stop, but we don't work together to curate the culture that would actually lead to this stop. And here's what I was talking about earlier. I have some questions. What do you mean curating a culture that would lead to this stopping? Moreover, how exactly does curating a particular culture solve problems that were not created by culture? Case in point, rap music or rap culture before you say that. Did black people start rapping about how cool it would be to go shoot up people and keep guns on them and then black people started doing that? Or were many black people already living in the circumstances in which they were doing that already and then a few of them started making music about their stories? Remind me how they got into that position again? Education was a core black value to set up the school to prison pipeline and then exclude yourself from higher education? Or did for whatever reason black literacy get banned and then schools were segregated while black people were redlined into areas that had no money and then when they couldn't segregate schools anymore they started funding public schools based off property taxes but then again the property didn't have that much money in it so then schools didn't get that much funding and then classroom size. Finances. Was a core black value to get money and then just choose not to save up enough of it for future generations? Or did black people you know work for free and then when they were finally able to get money some of them tried to buy houses only to have their loans denied disproportionately or get charged incredibly high interest rates or just get booted out of their community because the white people didn't want them there and a lot of the other avenues to learn how to save your money and spend your money responsibly is guarded behind tuition costs and higher education that black people could not afford disproportionately because for whatever reason violence was a core black cultural value to just get guns and shoot each other or did people get put into poor areas where their wealth mobility and job opportunity were greatly hindered and their community protection was greatly hindered considering that the police and government were working on the same racist policies so 
you turn inward for revenue and for protection that snowballs into gang violence that we see today. Thus, these are the conversations we should be having. And these are the conversations that people who correctly point out the fact of systemic racism are having. So while it's easy and more punchy to put the blame on black people by just saying it's the culture, bro. And while everybody should do the best to improve their circumstances, it is a fact that policy has created a lot of the issues we see. It is a fact that environment will shape the culture. And until the environment gets changed, we will keep seeing this. This This is my outfit for today, and if you don't like it, you could leave. Okay, love you! Chris Brown has a track record of beating up defenseless women. Actually, bro, I don't think women are defenseless. I actually think women are quite strong. Hashtag girl power. Hashtag girl boss. Hashtag strong women. Hashtag feminism. I don't hashtag know. that's the power of like, Hashtag like, like right now specifically, bro. I don't think hashtag that's the power. Yo, I love Africa. Can you speak African? Actually, the general language spoken across Africa is called Africanese, and that's what I'm actually speaking to you right now. But you can hear it in your language because the ancestors are currently translating what I'm saying from in Africanese to your language, and that's why you can understand me. But we only speak Africanese in Africa. Yeah. Um, I've been seeing a lot of TikToks lately about people complaining about how hard it is to live in America and everything's more expensive and it's a third world country with a Gucci belt. And I just want you to know one thing. You are not crazy. That is fact. We rank 25th in the world for economic freedom, 129th in global peace, the land of the 15th freest, 15th, 17th for quality of life, 20th for gender equality, 18th for healthcare. But we spend more than anybody else. We have the lowest life expectancy for men and women of any country with a high GDP. We rank second to last in childcare quality. 29th in work-life balance. No surprises there. Pay attention because this is a weird one. The scale for this one says that the number one country has the highest rate of poverty. What that means is 54 countries have a lower poverty rate than the richest country in the world. We do, however, rank number one in a few places. We are absolutely killing the game in the cost of college. Number one, baby! Scotland tried, but we do have the highest rate of overdoses. And you can always rest assured that you live in the richest country in the world, except that the richest 10% own 70% of the wealth and the bottom half are fighting over 2.5% of it. What I'm trying to say is if you feel like you're struggling just to survive right now and this seems like a bunch of bullshit, it's because it is a struggle to survive right now and it is a bunch of bullshit. I just want you to know one thing. You are not crazy. That is fact. We rank 25th in the world. Obviously, go watch the full video, but I just wanted to point out. <laughs> this one right here is going to be a hard pill for some of y'all to swallow. So go ahead and grab you some water. Then come on back and let your favorite goddess king, let your favorite spiritual dom, Lady Speech, tell you something. Everybody ain't out here trying to heal. Everybody ain't out here trying to grow. Everybody ain't out here trying to expand, ascend, be a better person, do they shadow work. Some folks take comfort in the cesspools of life. Some folks bathe themselves in negativity and trauma. Some folks bask in the pain now. I'm not talking about BDSM, kink, or depression for that matter. I'm talking about the folks who wear the cloak of their shadows, the unhealed parts of their shadows, proudly like costumes, like skin. This is why you can't help or heal everybody. Some folks have made a home of their suffering, and there is nothing you can do to get them out. There is no such thing as a late-term abortion. Let's talk about it.
A common tactic of the anti-abortion stance is to use emotionally manipulative language. This is why they say that abortion is killing a baby when it's really just terminating a pregnancy. This is why they created a bill criminalizing abortion called the heartbeat bill when it would be more accurate if it was called the fetal cardiac activity bill. And this is why they use the term late term abortion. A pregnancy is full term from 39 to 40 weeks and late term at 41 weeks. So late term should never be used to describe abortion. Nobody's getting an abortion at eight or nine months pregnant. That's called giving birth. But people incorrectly use the term late term for abortions done before 20 weeks. This is so you're led to believe that people just willfully walk into clinics and terminate viable pregnancies. And they never talk about the fact that the reason that a lot of people get abortions after 16 weeks is because they are obstructed or prevented from getting one. Obstructions that have only been made worse since the overturning of Roe versus Wade. I want to do that. A picnic in Central Park, looking like a cottage core princess. Okay, okay. I brought books, but I didn't even end up reading them. But I've been waiting to do this ever since it started getting warmer in New York City. I've been waiting. I want to have my black girl picnic. I want it. I want the Pinterest photos. I want the aesthetic. I need it. And I got it. Boom. Look at me twirl at the very end of this video. Just wait. Just wait. Boom. End of statement. Drop the mic. One weird thing about transitioning is that I can no longer do hypnosis. I have to do hypnotrans, or as I like to call it, the trans trance. <laughs> If you don't watch Fox News, here are five totally real and definitely not made up stories you might have missed this week. Drag queens have finally taken over society. I know I can't believe it took this long, but luckily the good people at Fox have a plan B. Why is it everything drag queens? Why not mimes or goths or clowns? Mimes? In the year of our Lord 2023. I gotta hand it to them. They've got their finger on the pulse. Speaking of the woke left whatever, a new comparison for wokeism just dropped. I would argue that wokeism is every bit as racist as white nationalism. Greg makes a lot of great points there. Um, unrelated, can you please define wokeism for us? I give it another six months before it's gone. Jordan Neely's public lynching was justified. I'm sorry, you're getting another Gutfeld clip, but yesterday he made one of the most infuriating arguments I have ever heard. If anybody says this is like George Floyd, no, it's because of George Floyd. Oh, and not only that, but this happened because we made the police feel emasculated. Because since George Floyd, we've had the resulting chaos, the defunding, the emasculation of the police. If you can't do your job without brutality, I'm just gonna assume you're impotent. And if you don't stop a civilian from getting choked, it's not the left who's emasculating you. They were adult men. Teachers are no longer allowed to be Christian, at least according to Laura Ingram. Can you be both a serious Christian and a public school teacher? In Riverside, California, the answer is no. Yeah, it sounds like that sucks. Except in this case, serious Christian means antagonizing trans students. So yeah, I don't have a lot of sympathy. Sorry. And finally, Jesse Waters has a superpower. He can tell if someone's undocumented just by looking at them. I saw on the way into work a illegal immigration family digging through the trash looking for recyclables. How did you know they were illegal? You can tell. He keeps going. I can tell. I'm a city guy. Yeah, he's not done yet. You don't want me to get into it, but I can tell. No, please, Jesse, continue. I, for one, would love to hear more about this. How exactly can you tell if someone's undocumented, just by looking at them. I'm a city guy. I will probably see you on Friday for next week's recap. I might be playing Tears of the Kingdom, but until then, uh, don't murder people. I don't understand why this is now a hot take, but yeah, murder is bad, and you can quote me on that. This trend is so funny. The fact that you even mentioned the hair horns reminded me about the concept of hair horns and I'm literally about to cut myself hair horns because I was like, damn it, I did never cut myself hair horns in 2021. I want fucking hair horns. I saw another post about the girl talking about the little bunny hat, like thank God I never bought the bunny hat, literally on my door and a panda one because they're sick and I'm still gonna wear them because they're sick. 
They be like, God, I don't like that you rapping on trap beats. He don't even like that you rapping. I was like, word. Let me ask God. It's not what I heard. Huh? All right, let's see how much HRT I get to take today. I cannot get over Daniel Penny's murder of Jordan Neely, and we need to talk more about it and why it is definitely an escalation of fascism, as I mentioned in the previous video. Trigger warning that this is going to get very dark because it's a very dark situation. This is a Newsweek article. He was screaming in an aggressive manner, uh, but he was saying he had no food, he had no drink, that he was tired and doesn't care if he goes to jail. Also says that he did not attack anyone. Now, first of all, I want to push back on the idea that Jordan Neely was experiencing a mental health episode that was unique to him or special or something particularly about him that was wrong. Being surrounded by people, but being without food or water or help or a home, that is a situation that we would all, every last one of us, react to with some sort of outburst. Because we are supposed to be able to receive help from other people when we need it. That's just how it's supposed to be naturally. But that empathy has been beaten out of us, essentially, by this system. His reaction is not a mental health outburst. It is a perfectly normal reaction to the conditions in which he had been placed by a combination of the state and the circumstances and everything else, right? Things that he had no control over. This is a lack of empathy that has everyone from the governor and the mayor refusing to condemn and even saying, well, actions have consequences. The mayor, the Democratic mayor, actually said that about this killing. And then a reflection of that cruelty coming from the top, all the people on that train decided that rather than be faced with the desperation that we we're all surrounded by, that we could be doing more to alleviate, they just wanted the problem to go away. And so they watched as someone by another civilian, for all they knew, was choked to death, and two of them actually helped. Rather than offer this person a Larabar or a Smart Water, they decided, we'd rather just watch him die. The person that held his arm down was a BIPOC person, so this shows that the system is in all of us. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. This cruelty has seeped into all of us. And before you say he didn't know that he was going to kill him, I mean, a Marine knows what a blood choke will do to someone, so whatever to that, but also, he was warned by bystanders that he's going to kill the homeless black man. I won't share the last part of those details out of respect to Jordan, but let's just say it was very obvious that he was about to die. If we, as a society, as humans, do not take the anger that we have internalized and turned against people like Jordan and direct it towards the people who deserve it, the next step is that we're all going to get it worse. Every time you see a homeless person or an encampment and you think like, I wish they would go away, I want you to stop yourself. I want you to check your empathy, and I want you to remember who caused this. It was not them. There are people who deserve our anger, and it is not people like Jordan Neely. Period. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend her cultural food is gross and unhealthy? <sighs> so, well, um, yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. I think we know. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm glad I'm here. Thank you. I'll leave now. Done? All right. So, my girlfriend is Pakistani. Uh, she's 28, and I am white, 31. Oh. Uh, I can't here relate. We go. Uh, we have been together for three years, but live separately. My lease just ended and my new place isn't ready yet. So I asked my girlfriend if I could move in with her. I told her I can't pay rent or for groceries since my new apartment's rent is higher than what I was paying at my old place. So I need to save. She was hesitant, but agreed eventually since rent. I have nowhere else to go. 
So he's moving apartments. He's a, he's moving it like his new place. He's probably waiting a couple weeks. Okay. So he's open. moving. Just I just want to make sure yeah. I understand. He's moving in with her temporarily and will not be providing rent or groceries, groceries because the home in which he's moving into that is not ready yet costs more than what? he can afford. So he yes. cannot provide anything to the household that he's about to stay in for a few weeks. Okay, yes. I just want to make sure. You just you got that all <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, I was a little confused. <laughs> I work from home and she works a demanding job from the office. She is a social worker and has been experiencing burnout apparently. Uh, apparently. Apparently. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what she does, but she's burned out. Um, How can you burn out from talking? <laughs> I'm sorry. Help people. It's not that hard. <laughs>
like this brings the movement down. Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around.